Hey guys, Michael Sherp here. Welcome to the second part where we look at front end development and the tools that we use or that I use more. And today we're going to look at frameworks and a bit of CSS and how to make your life easier and an automation tool that's going to make your life significantly easier if you're not using it yet. So without further ado, let's start. Okay, let's talk about the next and and all the points up until now were probably very, yeah, programmer specific, not necessarily WordPress or even front end development. So now let's talk about a why we should use a theme framework and before we start this discussion I just want to go into one thing and this is saying that we should use frameworks which means we should always build on things that we have already done or other people have done and not try and invent the wheel every single time I mean that's that's probably the biggest time killer ever if you just try and code up everything from scratch. I mean, you may as well just start with your own CMS and then just do everything from scratch for every client. Obviously, you see where this is going. This is completely inefficient. So let's talk about the uh, theme framework. And my preferred solution is the Genesis framework. And the main reason why I really like it is because they basically turn theming into playing with Legos. And this is a bit exaggerated, but what they do is they essentially give you slots where you can place in your code. And they accomplish this with hooks and filters from WordPress. And I just like this approach because it makes it very easy to change a page and to change a structure because you can just pull and push that those blocks around until you have what you want. And if I wasn't using the Genesis framework, there's several alternatives. Uh, underscores would be probably my preferred choice. And then there's several other ones. I have used Starkers quite a bit in the past when I didn't know about Genesis because it gives you a very clean and very slim start and you can just build on top of that. Okay, the next topic we have are CSS frameworks. For the same reason you don't want to start your theme every time from scratch, for the same reason you don't always want to invent your grid again, like you don't always want to have to code your grid and you don't always want to have to test it across all those 27,000 browsers that exist right now. And that's one of the main reasons for me to use a CSS framework is not necessarily to take the elements and, and just have my websites all look the same. It's more for the, for the cross browser com compatibility of, of my grid and certain elements. And then obviously afterwards you go in and customize them and style them and make sure they do look according to the design that you want to accomplish. My preferred solution here is uh, Twitter Bootstrap. I think it's basically the biggest and most used. And so far I'm, I'm really like it and it's very easy to use. I don't have to worry about too much about cross browser testing. I mean, I definitely still do that, but a lot of the work gets taken away from you because you get those classes. Obviously there's a learning curve. You have to learn the framework, otherwise you can't use it and you have to basically know what exists for you to use it. An alternative here would be SERP from Foundation and there's probably lots of other ones, but those two, in my opinion, are the biggest ones and if you want to start with one, I would start with those two and maybe explore the other ones too. The next topic that I want to talk about is CSS preprocessors. And essentially, the main reason why you want to use a preprocessor is because CSS by itself is very tedious to write and somewhat inefficient. And I mean, very often you're nesting stuff or you wish that you could nest stuff. And the processors, or the preprocessors take away a, a lot of the unneeded work and just offer you lots of cool features that you can do like variables. Uh, have you ever come across the, the situation where you wish you could have stored that background color in a variable because who can remember F73905? Nobody can. 
So you could store it in a variable called background and then you just have it accessible throughout your entire CSS file. Another thing that I always come across is the structure. And essentially if you have a big CSS file, you have like, I don't know, 5,000 lines. And then the only thing you can do is essentially import other modules and but that's not a good idea because it makes it really slow especially if you're importing a lot of modules this is like super slow and the CSS preprocessors essentially allow, allow you to do modules and really like have blocks of CSS that are structured and pull them into one master CSS file and there you have it it's, it's super efficient. The solution I like is SAS in combination with Compass. Um, I think it's the way to go. Also, WordPress is currently inofficially adapting SAS, so you may want to go with that option. The alternative here would be less, uh, which is also a very feasible alternative. I prefer SAS, so it's your choice. The next point I want to talk about is task automation. There's lots of small stuff that we do all the time, like minifying stuff or optimizing images or moving files around or whatever else it could be that, that you just have to do on a regular basis. And for all this stuff, I mean, you don't want to do this manually every time. If, if, if you catch yourself doing something like, I don't know, pulling or copying your JavaScript file and then going to some service online and minifying it and then coming back or even if it is just like hitting a keyboard shortcut in your in your editor to minify some stuff then probably you want to have a automate an automated task runner here and grunt is my preferred solution uh, the other alternative would be gulp and there's probably others out there but grunt is by far my preferred solution lots of Lots of tasks that are already out there. You don't have to reinvent the, the wheel. All right, this has been the second part for front-end dev tools for WordPress. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave it down in the comments below. I'll make sure I respond to this personally. Also, if you want to find me, you can do so on my website at chirp.com or find me over on Twitter at chirp, Google Plus or Facebook. I would love to connect with you. All right. See you in the third part. Bye.